Hello everyone, this is Bhatmanabhan. In this presentation, I am going to talk about clustering coefficient. So let's get started. The contents to be covered in this presentation includes Introduction to clustering coefficient. In this introduction, we will see about what is the need for clustering coefficient, what is its definition. Then we will move on to types of clustering coefficient. Here we will talk about two types of clustering coefficient, global and local and what is the major difference between them and how can we calculate both the clustering coefficients. Then we will talk about clustering coefficients for random graph. How can we calculate clustering coefficient for a given random graph? And then we will move on to uses of clustering coefficients. So introduction to clustering coefficient. Well. What is the need for clustering coefficient? The degree of a node contains no information about the relationship between a node's neighbors. What kind of relationship are we talking about? Do the neighbors of a particular node know each other or they are isolated from each other? Let us look at it graphically. So consider two graphs, graph 1 and graph 2 and look at the node i and the i has same degree in both the graphs. but the neighbors of i is more clustered or they are more connected in graph 1 than in graph 2. To know about those things we need something other than the degree. Degree alone cannot provide that information to us. So for that we are going to clustering coefficient. And the actual definition states the clustering coefficient is a measure of the degree to which a nodes in the graph tends to cluster together. To put in simple words it tells what fraction of neighbors are connected. When we talked about the need to find clustering coefficient, we mentioned something like needing to know about the node's neighbors information, right? Why do we need to know about that information? To provide an answer to that question, let us consider a simple case study involving academic social networks. So academic social networks provide a channel through which researchers and academicians know about the current trend of research and find expert in the concerned domain. Due to huge number of people involved, the network is hugely dense and it is difficult to identify a group of researchers working in a single domain or working for a single research paper. So what I am talking about is this. So let us consider this example. Here the graph is modeled in such a way that nodes represent different persons and a relationship has been provided between two nodes if the two persons know each other or not. By the look at by looking at the graph itself we can say that to find people working in a single research or a single domain it is very difficult. However, if the graph is clustered based on research interest and further on the similarities of their profiles, it would make the process of information retrieval faster and efficient. So what I'm talking about is this. Now look at the graph. The graph is modern in such a way that people with similar interests are being related. Now here the violet color represents the people who are interested in computer science and the yellow represents people who are interested in biological sciences. Now by looking at this itself we can say who are the people who are interested in biological science and computer science. The graph is clustered and using this cluster we can retrieve the information faster and efficient rather than this right so this is a simple case study to provide why do we need to know about a node's neighbors information okay let's move on to the next topic types of clustering coefficient in types of clustering coefficient let us see about global clustering coefficient the global clustering coefficient is based on triplet of nodes. So before going into global clustering coefficient, let us know what is mean by triplet of nodes. Well, triplet of nodes as the name suggests is three nodes that are connected by either two or three undirected ties. So what does it mean? Let us look at an example. Uh, consider this graph. In this graph, i, j and b are connected to form a closed triangle like structure and this is known as closed triplet and m v and n are connected to form an open triangle like structure and this triangle like structure we will call it as an open triplet 
and based on these two closed and open triplet we will define global clustering coefficient as number of closed triplets divided by number of all triplets both open and closed and as a name suggests global clustering coefficient is for the entire graph rather than we can not find global clustering coefficient for a particular node it is meaningless so let us look at an example so this graph the global clustering coefficient value is 1 by 3 now let us see about local clustering coefficient the local clustering coefficient of a node in a graph quantifies how close its neighbors are to being a complete graph and its formal definition is number of edges among the neighbors divided by maximum possible number of edges among neighbors so we can understand it by looking at an example let us consider three graphs graph 1 2 and 3 and as the name suggests the local clustering coefficient will be determined for each and every node let us consider the node i the one that is shaded with red color now for the graph 3 if you look at node i's neighbors they are not connected at all that's why their clustering coefficient is zero because the numerator of the fun law number of edges amongst a neighbor of a node i is zero in the case of graph 3 whereas in graph 1 the maximum possible number of edges among the neighbors is equal to number of edges among the neighbors so for the graph 1 the clustering coefficient becomes 1 so this is the basic understanding of local clustering coefficient let us consider another example for local clustering coefficient consider a node i with a degree k i then the local clustering coefficient c i is defined as 2 times e i divided by k i into k i minus 1 here e i represents the number of edges between the node's neighbor now with this formula in our hand let us look at few examples let us consider three graphs graph 1 graph 2 and graph 3 and let us consider the center node being the node i so the ki value for the center node is 4 and the clustering coefficient value is 1 by 6 meaning there can be six possible edges between the four neighbors of node i and there is only one available over there and let us look at a graph 3 for the node i the degree is 5 and the maximum possible edges that is that can be available between the five neighbors is 10 and we have only three nodes we have only three edges available between the nodes neighbor so the clustering coefficient value is 3 by 10 now let us look into network average clustering coefficient it is nothing but an alternative to a global clustering coefficient to measure the overall clustering level of a network so consider there are n vertices then network average clustering coefficient is computed using their average so where ca represents clustering coefficient for each node in the network and n represents their n nodes in the network okay now let's consider clustering coefficients for random networks before getting into finding clustering coefficient for random network let us refresh few random network concepts. The model that we are going to consider is GNP model. In this model, the probability P is fixed for any n value. The n value determines how many number of nodes that we are going to have in our random graph. And each pair of n labeled node is connected with probability P, which means an edge can exist between any pair of nodes with the probability P. Let us look at it visually. So, here the edge probability is 0.01 and for the edge probability 0.01 we can see how the random graph gets generated step by step. So here an edge is created between any two vertices randomly with the probability 0.01. So this is the model that we are going to consider. The expected number of links in a random graph is given by this one. As the graph is random, we cannot actually find the number of links rather than we can find only the expected number of links in the random graph. Here, 
the expected number of links is found using the formula p times n into n minus 1 divided by 2. Here p denotes the probability and the maximum links that we can attempt to connect is n into n minus 1 by 2. So let us move on to average degree of a random network. So the average degree of a random network is given by this formula 2 times l l is nothing but the expected number of links in a random graph divided by n the number of labeled vertices in the random graph now we can go on to finding clustering coefficient for random graph to calculate the clustering coefficient for a node in a random network we need to estimate the expected number of links between the nodes neighbors and we know that in a random network the probability that two neighbors linked to each other is p and the maximum possible links that can exist between k neighbors of node i is k i times k i minus 1 divided by 2 this leaves us to the expected value l i as probability times the maximum number of links that is possible and this has come from this formula that we saw in the previous slide now let us move on to finding the local clustering coefficient for a random network. As we know from the definition, a clustering coefficient is nothing but number of links between a node's neighbors divided by its maximum number of possible links between the neighbors, right? And that is what this. Li gives us the estimated number of links between the k neighbors of node and the maximum possible links that can exist between k neighbors is k times k minus 1 divided by 2. And dividing those two we come up with this equation the relationship between the clustering coefficient ci and the average degree of a network k is given by this formula with that we can move on to our next topic that is clustering coefficient as metric this is one of the uses of clustering coefficients we can see how clustering coefficient can act as a metric and for what it is acting as a metric Well, before going to that, we need to note few points from the clustering coefficient equation that we have. So, from the above equation, we can make two predictions. For a fixed average degree of a network k, the larger the network, the smaller is a node's clustering coefficient. That is, c decreases with the system size n. And then, the local clustering coefficient of a node is independent of the node's degree ki. And these are the two predictions that we can make from the clustering coefficient equation for a random graph. With this, let us move on to our next topic, real networks and random networks. In the comparison between real and random networks, our clustering coefficient will be acting as a metric. Let us see how. And this is the plot between clustering coefficient divided by average degree of a network against the number of nodes in a given network. And the networks that are, that are considered here is real networks. And there are several of them here. The several means let us consider the model or a social networking model likewise. By looking at the trend, we find that C divided by K does not decrease as N inverse increases, but it is largely independent of N. This is violation of the prediction for fixed average degree of a network. The larger the network, the smaller is a node's clustering coefficient. That is, C decreases with system size N. This is one of the examples where our clustering coefficient acts as a metric. Now let us look at another example. And this is a plot between the clustering coefficient CK and the degree of a particular node I, K, I for the protein interaction network. This is also a real network. The dependency of C on the node's degree for the real network is systematically decreasing with the degree. Okay, this is a violation of our second assumption. The local clustering coefficient of a node is independent of a node's degree k. Here the green line represents the actual trend that should be satisfied by the real network, but it is not so. So with these two things, we can say that the real networks are not random networks. In this particular scenario, our clustering coefficient acts as a metric. Using clustering coefficient as a metric, we can prove that the real networks are not random networks. And here there are few more examples. In both these examples, 
The green line represents the trend that should be satisfied by the real network. But the real network does not satisfy that trend, it violates it. That's why the real network is not a random network. And with that, we have come to the end of our presentation. Thank you.